Okay. The question says, which two of the following errors would cause the total of the debit column and the total of the credit column of a trial balance not to agree? You know, uh, when you speak of the errors in the trial balance, there are two types. There are those which, which leave the trial balance uh, balanced, which leave the trial balance credit and debit size they agree, but there are those which cause uh, the balances to disagree, right? Yeah. So here uh, we are told, we are asked on which of the following errors would cause the total debit and total credit column of the trial balance not to agree. Actually, before going any further, you can just learn one thing. You can just learn that, uh, you know, I have the debit side and I have the credit side. Why not agree? Why not? Why not agreeing? Why? What is the reason? You know, the first reason could be maybe one side entry. One, one side entry. You put entry on one side, another side being left, another side left. So if you put entries on one side and the other side would not put anything at all, obviously the trial balance won't count, won't balance because uh, you would have made double counting, right? But also you could say two entries because when speaking with double entry, we mean, that we mean that we have entered both on both sides twice. So maybe two entries, two entries made on one side. You debit, maybe you make credit sales, and so you expect to debit trade receivables and maybe credit sales, but you end up doing the same thing. You debit trade receivables, but also debit sales, and so that's a problem. But also it could be entering different figures, right? Different figures, because when you speak of double entry, it means that uh, the same figures should be used. Now you have used different figures. So obviously the trial balance won't, won't agree. So uh, we are told to study down here and then decide on the reason uh, for the trial balance not to agree. Okay, so what would be the reason for it not to agree? Okay, number one. For number one, we are told that a transposition error was made when entering a sales invoice into a sales day book. You do know the sales day book? Yeah, the one that we record credit sales. Yeah, we just record, but no double entry is done, right? And you know, when, yeah. when you're told of the transposition error is just like swapping, we, have, we swap the numbers. Instead of let's say 84, I write as 48, right? Yeah. So if you do that, actually, you know, that is before double entries. That is before double entry. If a trial balance doesn't balance, that is because of double entry, not because of previous entries. There will be an error, but that error won't have led to the trial balance not agreeing. Right, because if you have the sales day book, you would have the total figure, and that total figure, let's say, in case it has been used for double entry, instead of eight or four, I put there for the eight. No problem. If it's sales day book, I made credit sales. In the books, I would have debited trade receivables by forty eight and the credited sales by forty eight. So the trial balance would have been fine. At an initial impression, right? So number one yeah. wouldn't have been the problem. Okay, let's go to number two. Number two says uh, a check received from a customer was credited to cash. A check received from customer was credited to cash and the correct trade recognized in receivables. You see this? Of course, yeah. we expect a check to we expect to record the check maybe on the bank side, right? Not on the cash side. Yeah. But if you receive a check. Maybe you, because they are written here receivables mean that I had sold goods on credit to a customer. A customer pays pays me. If a customer pays, I'll go on the on the trade receivables and the credit. Actually, you have been told that it, it was corrected recognized in receivables. So a correct recognition in receivables should be credit, right? Because a yeah. customer pays, a customer pays, mm -hmm. and so the amount they owe me decreases. So the amount of my trade receivables would have to fall. And since trade receivables is of a debit nature, it means that uh, I will, 
the trade receivables was properly credited. So since I received the amount, I was supposed to debit bank. But of course, the cash account was used, but still it was not debited. It was credited. You see this? Yeah. So it means that the credit side was actually posted on twice. Instead of one entry to be on debit and the other on credit, but all the entries were made on the credit side. Just as I told you earlier that recording entries on one side is one of the reasons that makes the trial balance not to agree, right? So number two would definitely be one of the reasons uh, for the trial balance not to agree. Do you agree or not? Yes, I agree. Okay, now let's go to number three. Number three says, a purchase of non-current assets was omitted from the accounting records. A purchase of non-current assets was omitted from the, now they are just saying from the accounting records, if it was omitted at all, right? That means, because they are not specifying that maybe one side was affected, they are just saying that the purchase was omitted at all. If it was omitted at all, it means that both debit and credit side have been affected. So of course, those total figures would both have been decreased by the same amount. And so they would still look like you're agreeing. And they would really agree, although there would be an error that did not affect, that did not prevent the trial balance from agreeing. So it's no big deal. It didn't affect the books. All right. Number four says rent received was included in the trial balance as a debit balance. I think this should be the problem, right? Yeah. Rent received. You know, if you do receive rent, let me tell one thing. Sometimes when you encounter problems like this, just try to visualize something. Rent, we are speaking of rent received. If you are speaking of rent received, that means maybe you are the landlord, for example, right? You are the landlord and a tenant gives pays you rent. If a tenant pays you rent, that means they give you cash. So you receive cash. So you have to debit cash and then credit rent received is an income, right? You get that? Yes. Sir. Yes. So debit cash or bank and then credit rent received. But here you are told that rent received was put as a debit balance. That means the debit entries were made twice. Right. Debit entries were made twice. So if they are made twice, you find that that's the problem. So the answer should be one and the three, right? Should be one and three. All right, uh, some, someone is, is here, 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 someone is. 